Welcome to Life of Hair, my name is James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. It's more of a science experiment around toning and the effects of toning on damp hair, wet hair and dry hair. Now, I know a lot of you out there will be toning on wet hair or damp hair, and that is for good reason, for speed, for time, for convenience, and many, many other factors. But some of you out there will be following the manufacturer's guidelines and toning on dry hair. It is okay to do any of those three things, wet, towel dried, or dry, but you need to know why and what the differences are. And if you want the products to perform in a different way, say like you're seeing on the internet, Instagram, YouTube, and you're not getting those same results, are you following the same steps or are you doing what you think you should be doing and getting a different result and questioning those results? So I'm gonna be really, really transparent about this test. I've got three pieces of hair that I've lifted up with bleach. The hair was not previously colored and I've just bleached it to all on the same lift. They were all bleached at the same time and they all feel like they're in the same condition. When I took these off, I shampoo and condition these strands so that they are an even porosity. So this is going to be the experiment. In front of me, I have got some level nine violet Redkin Shades EQ Demi-permanent, demi-permanent for those of you who are not sure, is in between a semi and a permanent. Some direct dye molecules that react instantly as soon as you apply them, and some oxygenative molecules that take time to process. And get a bit scared once you put your toner on, it looks like it's really going too dark. It's because of those direct dye molecules acting very fast, and the oxygenative ones need to kick in later. So don't be afraid, try and leave it on the full development time. This is another thing that I wanted to talk about. Full development times are important for the longevity of the product and to get the true tone. If you want something not to be yellow anymore, then it's better to leave it on for the full development time. The other thing that will always happen when you wet the hair is you will change the pH. Hair is normally 4.5 to 5.5 pH. If you put it into water, it becomes 7 pH. Now, this is not what the manufacturer recommended in terms of applying it to hair when it's damp, because the pH is different, and when the pH is different, there's more cuticle layers that are open, and there's more chance of the color sinking deeper than you were expecting it to in the first place. I hope all that made sense, and if it doesn't, then grab me in the comments down below and let me know which bits of that didn't hit home with you. So let's get on with the experiment so that you can see some of the results and some of the things that we are expecting to see, which is potentially it going too dark when it's wet, potentially not getting the color saturation that we were expecting from the tone that we chose, and is the one onto dry hair for full processing time the premium result that we were expecting. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the strand of hair, I'm gonna dip it in, this is just plain water. I'm gonna dip it into this water and saturate it completely. And I'm just gonna run my fingers through it like as if you've squeezed the moisture out of the hair just before you apply a toner. So we can see that's quite wet. And what we're gonna do is place it on to our foil and then we're going to color it. One thing I'll mention as well, when hair is wet, it will always look darker than when it's dry. So it's very difficult to 100% gauge what exact level you're on when you are putting a toner onto wet hair. I'm gonna save that for another video where we look at toning on level and what level we think it is, but keep your eyes peeled for that at another point. I'm gonna paint one side and then the other, and I'm gonna do this to all of the sections just for the sake of continuity and even saturation. These are quite big pieces of hair, so I'm gonna make sure I get as much product on there as it would require. So, that is piece one. Piece number two, exactly the same piece as we, as we had before. We're gonna dip it in the water, we're gonna saturate it fully as if you just shampooed, and instead of just wringing it out, I'm going to towel dry it. I'm gonna make sure that I remove as much moisture as I can, just with the towel. Okay, so that is considerably drier than the first piece we just took. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with exactly the same color, 9V Redkin Shades EQ. Now this, just because it's Redkin Shades EQ, this still applies to 
most, if not all, colour brands, I don't know any colour brands specifically that recommend that you apply to wet hair. Section number two. So what I'm going to do is with that one, I'm just going to fold the corner on the bottom left so that we can identify which piece that was. And then with this third section, I'm going to apply it to completely dry. Uh, and just for the sake of continuity, I folded on the towel dried section, the left hand side. And on this particular section, I'm going to fold the right hand side so we can easily identify which piece this was, the dry piece. And I will bring you the results back so that you can see how the three may differ. We may not see any drastic results between the three, but the manufacturer recommends for the longest, best lasting, most tone to apply it to dry hair. So these are the results that I was just talking about. And I hope you can see on the camera um, what I can see in real life. Now the results are very, very close. I'm gonna say that straight away. On the right hand side over here, we've got the dry one. In the middle, we've got the towel dried one. Left hand side here, we've got the wet one or the sort of wrung out one. Now, I've asked two of my colleagues as well to tell me what they think of the results and everybody agreed that they actually thought that this was the worst result, the wrung out one. Uh, they couldn't really distinguish too much between these two. Um, some people preferred this one and uh, the other person preferred this one. So this one's grabbed a bit more tone uh, and this one's got less tone to it. And this one just looks darker and not so nice. It's that one's. So fact, don't put it onto my hair. Make sure if you're going to apply it to anybody's hair, a toner that is not dried, following manufacturer's guidelines, make sure it's at least towel dried and you will get a tonal change or a tonal shift to fully dried like we see here. Uh, that's certainly the results that I see and my colleagues see exactly the same thing so I'm going to take their word for it also. Uh, I've asked two people with a very good eye for colour. I would say that it's okay to put it onto towel dried hair but you need to remember that you're probably going to get more tone because the hair's more porous, pH 7, um, as opposed to pH 4.5 to 5.5. And I will say, on a condition note, and actually in terms of condition that it's created, I think that this looks in worse condition than these two. If I zoom in on the ends of these, this one, you can see they're distinctly more... I don't know, frayed or, you know, not smooth compared to the other two. So that's quite interesting. I find that really interesting more than anything else. So there are the results. I hope you found that interesting. I know it's not ultra scientific. I did a previous experiment where I bleached four sections of hair with 10, 20, 30, 40, and a lot of people have given me their opinions on how I should have done the tests. But what I want to do is do like real life tests, real life scenarios, how people might use the products in the salon. I'm not setting up a laboratory. I'm not doing it in laboratory conditions. That's what the manufacturers are for. I just want to give my opinions or I want to try and create a sort of real life result, study on how best to use products no matter what brand, no matter what manufacturer, no matter who made them, I want to see them as you might use them. So if you found this interesting, then do smash that thumbs up button so more people can enjoy this episode. Leave me a comment, tell me your thoughts down below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all those of you who have. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you again for another episode of The Life of Hair very, very soon.